1983, an arcade game was released by Namco that took Japan by storm. Though its release didn't go well in the US, it was ported to different collections as time went on, including plug and plays, and even ending up on Namco Museum for the Nintendo DS. My family lives a very far distance away, and so on car rides, I would play this game like no tomorrow. And today, I want to bring you the knowledge that I've gained on this game. So, I present to you, Mappy, The Essentials. Starting off with some basics, you play as Mappy, a police mouse who is trying to retrieve items stolen by the Cat Mafia. While doing so, you will be chased by Goro, his Meow Keys, and the Gunzenzo coin. Along with this, you will have to watch out for the trampolines you bounce on, as they can break, and how much time you take on the stage. I want to talk about points next, because extra lives are key. The lowest points come from trampolines, which give you 10 points per bounce. Closing a door on a Meow Key nets you 50 points. Microwave doors open and fire a beam that travels in the direction of the door, giving you points based on how many Meow Keys you caught in it. The maximum amount of points you can get is 6,000, but if you catch Goro, it automatically doubles the points no matter how many Meow Keys you get in it. Theoretically, with this, the maximum is 12,000 points. Items give you specific amounts of points, but collecting two of them in a row will gain you a multiplier. If you keep collecting them and don't break the streak, you can get a six times multiplier. Lastly, if you collect an item that Goro is hiding behind, he gives you an extra 1,000 points. Before we move on to stages, we need to talk about two last mechanics that are very important to the game. Firstly, the hurry is a mechanic that happens a specific amount of time into a stage, speeding up the Meow Keys and spawning more of them. Stages become more difficult after this, so clear them as fast as possible. Another note is that it also freezes you, which can really mess up some of your timings if you're in a groove. But because we are wimps, we're going to be playing on Ultra Hard Mode. Due to the difficulty of this mode, there is one last tech I need to teach you. Door slapping. When closing a door on yourself, you gain immunity frames and a slight boost if you slap yourself through it, helping you clear stages faster and avoid meowkies. With this in your arsenal, let's talk about stages. Starting off with stage one, as with any game, it is a very nice introduction to the difficulty, and don't worry, you're gonna have a lot of time to practice this stage with all of the resets and game overs. The goal with stage one is to get at least a three times multiplier on the items, and as many points as possible without dying. Stage two is roughly the same, with the exception of the start strat where if you wait, you will be able to catch four Meowkies and Goro in the microwave, granting you very easy points. Another thing to watch out for is the trampolines on the edges, which can be your best friends and also your worst nightmare when it comes to the Mona Lisa at the bottom left. Be sure to collect it last or break the trampoline to get to it. With that, we are to our first bonus stage. Each bonus stage, you have to pop 15 balloons and an extra Goro balloon within a time limit to get a perfect score. As long as you don't mess up your timings and only take one try per balloon, you will get a perfect every time, which is 10,000 points. A good goal at this stage in the game is to have an extra life when you finish this stage and to have done it flawlessly up to this point, losing no lives.
Section 2 is where the game starts to get more difficult, and Stage 4 definitely shows that. With hard to get items and faster Meow Keys, the difficulty really starts to ramp up. Go for the radio in the center first while the Meow Keys are slow, or else you aren't going to be able to collect it without a lot of patience. Other than that, start using the microwaves for survival more than points, and door slap as much as possible. Since the trampolines can get cluttered very fast, always jump left as the Meow Keys seem to jump right more than left. Moving on to stage 5, it has an extra Meow Key off the bat, but still go for the radio first. Other than that, run like hell and just don't get caught. Stage 6 is pretty much like stage 4 and 5, but with the final Meow Key added. When the hurry kicks in, there will be nine of them, and they are very fast. Clear these, and you get a break with the next bonus stage. Stage 7 is another bonus round, and this one is a great break from the insanity that is about to come. Clear the stage fast, and don't mess up your timings, and you will be home free. Section 3 is, in my opinion, arguably the easiest section of the game. Be careful with the new hurry timing though, it can really catch you off guard. Stage 8 is the simplest stage since stage 1, since you have doors everywhere to use as escapes. Plus, you have three trampolines in the middle if you need more escape time. The bells on the side stun for three and a half seconds, granting you 300 points per stun, so, you have a lot of time to clear the middle section when you use it. Stage 9 is the same, only you don't have as much wiggle room on when you collect the radio, so use your bell and get to the item as fast as possible and clear it. Watch your timings on trampolines, and you'll clear it on no time. Stage 10 is the same as 9, but keep in mind all of the microwave doors are on the left side of the stage, so be careful on the right side as it can get messy quickly. Stage 11 is another bonus stage and another well-deserved break. But, as with all arcade games, developers love to troll you by changing familiar things. This bonus stage, you don't have time to clear all of the balloons, including the one at the top left. But, if you pop the Goro balloon, he will fly up and pop the last balloon for you. Time for Section 4. This is by far the most difficult, as it includes the last set of new stages. The Meow Keys are really, really fast now, and the hurry makes them almost impossible to outrun, meaning you have to use doors and ledges very wisely, or else you are dead meat. Section 4 also introduces drop platforms, which are platforms that when you run over them, 
they will disappear for three and a half seconds, allowing you and Meowkies to drop through them. If you drop through them, you die, so you need to be careful of that. But if the Meowkies drop through them, it will stun them and give you points, allowing you to get items on the edges of the map or get to safety quickly. Speaking of the edges of the map, the safes on the left and right end are death traps as they are dead ends. So use microwaves and drop platforms effectively to acquire those and get out before the hordes come and kill you. On stage 12, run to the right directly at the start, then immediately bounce back onto the platform and close the door on the Meowkey that is coming back for you. You can get to the center, clear it, and then work outwards. Stage 13 switches it up a little bit, but the same principles apply. This time you need to save the right safe till the very last item you collect, as it's almost impossible to time when the platform is coming back with the endless hordes of Meowkies chasing you and just on your tail the entire time. Use the disappearing platform on the left end to get the safe on that edge, then collect the Mona Lisa and use the microwave to get back to safety. Last tip for this stage, don't break the trampoline in the middle as it separates the Meowkies a lot and doesn't let them gang up on you as much. Finally, we have stage 14. This is the hardest stage in my opinion, as it has multiple long platforms with items, meaning there is very little room for error. The Mona Lisa is especially hard, but you still need to collect it before the safe on the left for the same reason as last stage, being the drop platform. Once the hurry hits, you are going to have to fight for your life, and it is basically panic until you either complete the stage or die. But complete this, and we are on to our final bonus stage. If you have made it this far, honestly, congratulations. This is a very difficult game, and to get here is stressful and very, very frustrating with the amount of times that you're going to have to reset. But again, you are rewarded with a nice break before diving back into the madness. But as with the last bonus stage, they switch it up once again. Instead of Goro popping the top left balloon, he will instead bounce right one column and pop the balloon at the top. With another perfect under your belt, keep going until you game over because from here out, it is just an endless game. After you clear section four, the game starts repeating with Meowkies going slightly faster. I don't have any of the stages or stats on these stages mapped out, so I wanna just talk about some weird things I found through my hours of playing this game. First, as I said before, the Meowkies tend to jump right more than left. I don't really know why this is, but it would be interesting to see if it has a hard code or if it's a mistake or glitch in the coding. Another thing about the Meowkies, they have a chance to start running right instead of left at the start of the stage. Again, I don't know if this is hard coded or just random chance, but I really would be interested to see that. Moving on to doors, you can actually open them across platforms, giving you more options to control the map state and gear it to your advantage. This is also useful for microwave doors as it can catch more Meowkies in the crossfire. Microwaves last until the wave goes off screen, so if you really want, you can run with it to try and catch more Meowkies in it. It's a great way to delay them from respawning to get it to a specific item if you want without dying. Other goofy ways to avoid dying or slam yourself into walls on the edges of stages as it sends you flying back down almost right away and can give you more control of when you jump and make a break for it. Never buffer your jumps though as delaying it can make the Meowkies fly past you and onto the platform above you, which is really nice. It is a little hard to get used to the timings, but once you master it, your deaths will decrease quite a bit. Lastly, the hitboxes are a little goofy on the Meowkies and Goro, so you can actually jump onto a platform with one, think you're dead, and then jump off unscathed. I'm not exactly sure how close you can be, it seems to be inconsistent from looking through my footage, but uh, frankly, I'm unsure. Two last things I wanted to mention that I forgot to before. Goro runs in a straight pathing until he gets stunned, hits a door, or goes to the edge of a map. 
I haven't quite figured out if he has a consistent pattern to the platforms he runs on in an order yet, but I feel like there is one. Uh, secondly, the Gonzenzo coin. If you take too long on a stage after the hurry, you'll hear a little bell sound effect, and then the coin will drop, be stunned for a second, and then start chasing you. It is really freaking fast and is immune to all stuns, microwaves, and doors, making it a death wish as it is. And the worst part, it can kill you when you are on a trampoline. And when I was a kid, this thing was absolute nightmare fuel. Okay, okay, one last funny thing. Uh, depending on the version, the one I grew up on was the plug and play one with Miss Pac-Man, Xevious, Pole Position, and Mappy. I don't remember the other one. Oh, it was Galaga. Anyway, um, if you wait long enough for the hurry, and after the hurry, the music speed is different, and halfway through the hurry or so, the music completely cuts out until the, goal, the coin comes, and it's just the sounds of trampoline bouncing and microwaves. It is absolutely terrifying, and I... <laughs> it, it, nightmare fuel, man. Just nightmare fuel. If you want to set this up on RetroArch, uh, you're going to need the Final Burn Neo Core and have your Mappy ROM on hand. Open it in Final Burn, then go to your Quick Menu, Core Options, and then go to Dip Switches. The settings for the difficulty I like is difficulty F with 5 lives, your first life at 30,000, and your second life at 80,000. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope this introduced you to Mappy or helped you find a new game to grind out for a while, as it really is just fun. I love playing it because it's demanding skill-wise, but also the planning ahead and finding different patterns to run to clear the stages faster. It's just, it's, it's so enjoyable. Every death feels like it's your fault as well, so it doesn't feel like it's RNG, which adds to the challenge and enjoyment even more. My current record is stage 13, with close to 115,000 points, and stage 12, with close to 124,000 points. I want to see you all break my records, though, because that would just be freaking fun. So comment if you get further or a higher score. I also really want to see a full screen version of the game, as that would clear up a lot of the guessing I had to make for the Meowki spawns off screen. Plus, it'd be fun to mess with the speeds and make an even more difficult version of the game. So if anyone is good at coding and could either edit the ROM or flat out recreate the game, that would be wicked. But with that, I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any other suggestions for games I could do or like this style of video, please let me know as this was really, really fun to make. But have an absolutely phenomenal day and I hope to see you all again soon. Until next time.